know the things in the subway are never signed. Because you don't because want anybody Because the work, looking. well, the drawing itself <laughs> is a signature. I mean, I most people can tell that the same person has done all the drawings. But if you don't sign it, how do they know who did it, and how do you get discovered? Um, well, most of the people in, in the subway probably still don't know who, who's doing them, mm -hmm. but, um, and that's probably the best way to come across them is to just see them and not know how they got there or why they got there. Um, but at the same time that I was doing things in the subways, I began showing things in galleries and um, things in the press and things. Birth, death, love, war. These simple, almost primitive images appeal to a wide range of people. The variety of people that were seeing the work brought with it a variety of responses and a variety of different ideas about what the work was. Paris, London, Brazil. By 1985, his work started to spring up around the world, crossing national and social boundaries. His work became a public voice for the young generation. Haring's work was simple and bold, instantly recognizable and easy to reproduce. Inevitably, the media caught on. In 1986, he opened a shop of his own. The pop shop opened in Lower Manhattan. A wide range of herring merchandise became available to shoppers of every kind. Yeah, I would like to get the bouncy thing with the black shirt. I like what he draws. I think it's cool. Some critics called it a sellout. The pop shop was more really a response to what was already happening in the world than it was something that was just an idea that was initiated on my part. I mean, the pop shop sort of grew naturally out of what the work was becoming anyway. The images had become part of the world. That, that there's a lot of information that's really important to, to be passed on to people and that if it's done in a way that's, that's interesting or is good quality, then it makes people even more interested in the thing that they're seeing, that they're learning. A lot of my quote-unquote introduction into the, the commercial side of things has been totally misunderstood and misrepresented by, um, by, especially by art critics or by sort of critics at large. I mean, people don't understand that there could possibly be any other motivation to do something that reaches a lot of people or to communicate on a, on a on, in a different way, in a new medium, in a new technique. Why would the dog be barking at the man at the Times Square station and worshipped as an idol at 14th Street? If there was a secret behind the subway drawings, it was semiotics, the theory of signs. At the School of Visual Arts, Herring studied semiotic theory and discovered that images can function like words. He uses images to create a language, like words in a sentence. The meaning of each symbol varies depending on how it is combined with other symbols. The drawings had become almost a vocabulary. There were flying saucers, there were pyramids, um, th things like this glowing rod that sort of was an archetypal, an archetypal weapon. I mean, it was anything from the, the sword and the stone to Darth Vader's um, you know, glowing rod. It sort of had this, this, this timeless, universal kind of thing where I was trying to, I think, use things that cut through all of, all of culture and all of history. Once I started to realize that exactly how I was communicating, I started to be much more aware of what I was communicating and, and really trying to sort of be more in touch with what exactly was going back and forth and not, not so much just putting out abstract thoughts but really trying to guide people to see particular things and starting to, to deal with more social concerns. A loner in the art world, 
but not to the rest of the world. Heath Herring, a stubborn optimist about life, about art, about people. If you love life, if you appreciate life and humans, then you should be against anything that's going against life and against people. I mean, when something is that obviously wrong, you have to be against it. You know, and, and I think it's partly responsibility, but it's partly just a natural response to, to seeing something that's wrong and wanting to, to say something about it or do something about it.